So when I tell people that I shoot with custom Kelvin white balance, I get one of two reactions. One reaction is always, wait, why would you do that? And the second reaction is, oh my gosh, it's something else to learn. How can I learn it? I don't know how to learn it. So what I want to do in this video today is to clear up any confusion about Kelvin white balance and answer some questions that we get all the time. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in on the behind the scenes of our normal everyday life. So I'm glad you're here. This conversation started when I got the R6. When I got the R6, I made a comment in one of my videos about how I set um, one adjustment, the adjustment ring, um, to white balance. And I want to try to explain and break down what Kelvin actually means, why I use it, and why it truly is personal preference and how it's actually affecting or not affecting your images. So just a quick overview for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about. When you are photographing anything, you have the ability to change the color temperature of an image. You can do it on auto. So the camera's deciding you could do something like a presetting. Let's like, Oh, sunlight or a cloudy day or in the shade, or you can choose custom Kelvin white balance where you are adjusting the dial that changes how cool or how warm an image. And so that adjustment, you have the freedom to make the image as warm or as cool as you want. And that was what it means to manually adjust Kelvin when you're shooting. So when people give me a little bit of pushback about why I shoot in Kelvin, normally their reasoning is because, Hey, why would you shoot in Kelvin? Because it doesn't matter if you select 5,500 when you're shooting in camera for your Kelvin, or if you shoot on auto white balance and you bring the image into Lightroom and then you adjust your white balance to 5,500 in Lightroom in post-processing, the image and the coloring will be exactly the same. So my answer to that would be one, I think it's personal preference. And for me, it's less about the technicality of shooting in Kelvin and more about how it empowers me while I'm shooting. I know that not everyone's going to agree with this and that is totally fine. But when I'm photographing, um, a couple, if I'm photographing my children, if I'm photographing, you know, on a wedding day and I had auto white balance and everything looks blue and gray and kind of gross on, you know, through my lens or on the back of my camera, if you're using a DSLR, um, to me, that's kind of uninspiring, right? Everything looks a little bit lifeless. And for me, I love being able to see close to the final product um, when I'm shooting. So I like to shoot as accurate as I can in camera, one for my own inspiration and encouragement, but also second reason is because it does speed up my editing. This is something that I've found to be true for so many photographers, especially since we launched the KJ preset process. And we have so many questions about editing with this product. I have found that it is so hard for so many photographers to actually see a good starting place for skin tones and warmth in images. Our eyes play tricks on us when we are shooting and we just let the camera decide how cool or warm the image should be. And then you get it in Lightroom and let's say it's an image that's kind of cool to you. It seems just a little bit cool. I'm going to warm it up. Let's say you, you make a significant adjustment towards warmer uh, white balance. And you feel like, oh, I did a lot, but really the image was so cool straight out of camera that your warmth adjustment is not nearly enough, but because it started so cool and so off the rails, you know, in one direction, you don't ever get to where it should be to be accurate because you feel like you're doing too much. So in my mind, I think, well, I would rather get it a little bit closer, not perfect, but a little bit closer in camera so that when I am actually editing, I'm a lot closer to where I want to be. And my eyes are not getting pulled in different directions. And it's confusing, quite honestly, to not have a good starting point. So for me, it's less about technically like, Oh, I got to get this right in camera. Um, or else my image is ruined. No, that's not true. It's more about, Hey, I want to make my life easier. And I want to see this image for where I want it to fully be, um, right off the bat. So it speeds up my editing and it inspires me while I'm shooting. Those are the two main reasons why I shoot in Kelvin. Does everyone ne need to shoot in Kelvin? No, they don't. It's just a personal preference. So overall, here's some quick tips when you're trying to start using Kelvin and you've never used it before. First of all, you want to learn the Kelvin scale. You don't have to memorize it, but you need to at least know and understand that if it's in this range, it's going to be cooler. All right. So the lower the number, the cooler it is, the higher the number, the warmer it is. And once you know that you understand that it makes your adjustments less confusing um, and quicker. 
So another tip would be to do some practice with this, like photograph your family around the house, photograph your pets, photograph something for fun where there's no pressure and remind yourself that even when you start using custom Kelvin at a shoot, if you want to, if you don't want to, that's no big deal. But if you want to start using um, manually adjusting Kelvin during a shoot, remind yourself like it should not be your priority. It's something you adjust if you think about it, but it's not a priority in terms of like, it should not be more important than your other manual settings. It should not be more important than how you manage your posing. I would hate for someone to go to a shoot and to be so focused on their Kelvin that they really don't give their clients a great experience when it comes to posing. That's so sad because again, it doesn't really matter technically to the raw file. You can always adjust it later. It's more about what's going to help you be inspired and save you some editing time. So last but not least, you want to set your camera up in a way that's it's quick and easy to find your Kelvin uh, adjustment. So maybe that's, you know, if you're shooting mirrorless, maybe it is um, your adjustment ring. Maybe that's your white balance. Maybe you set it up to be a quick, you can just quickly hear, hit the back of your screen and use your back dial, um, but find a way to quickly find your white balance so that it's easy for you to start memorizing this new tool as you're shooting. This concept like shooting with Kelvin, adjusting Kelvin, it's not going to make your whites any brighter. It's not going to get rid of green skin tones. Honestly, um, it's just going to make your green skin tones a little cooler, a little more warm. Like if you have struggles with lighting or struggles with manual shooting or struggles in general with your work, adjusting Kelvin is not necessarily going to fix those issues. All right. It's, it's going to maybe give you a little bit of a different picture of color when you are importing and actually taking images into Lightroom, but it's not going to fix the foundational problems that you may be having with other parts of your shooting technique. So thanks so much for watching. I hope that this cleared up some confusion. We get this question all the time in our inbox and in our KJ education Facebook group. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section below. So also, if you're a photographer and you are not a member of the KJ education Facebook group, there is a link for that below. It's a beautiful community full of encouraging photographers that like to encourage, lift each other up and help one another along on our journey. So thanks for tuning in. I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.